Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to our final segment this weekend on Inside West Virginia Politics. We're continuing to talk about energy policy in the state of West Virginia. Joining me right now is Zach Drennan. Uh, he is one of the co-owners of Revolt Energy uh, here in West Virginia. You guys are based in Nitro. Yep. Good to have you on the show. Great to be here. We just heard from Nancy Bruns, who's at uh, the Dickinson Salt Works. She's the co-owner there. And your company, Revolt Energy, is doing the solar installation. How exciting is this project for you guys? Uh, it, it, it's a huge uh, opportunity for us, and we are super excited. And all my guys, uh, when they were up on the roof, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's nice doing a big commercial job like that, and to have the exposure of doing something as iconic as J.Q. Dickinson Salt, you know, it was really, it's been really great for us. How important is it? I mean, look, we're in a state that, that we're having kind of a tug of war. What to do with energy? Do we stick with fossil fuels, sure. or is it time to convert to solar and, and uh, sun power and so forth? When you have a name as iconic as J.Q. Dickinson attached to a project like this, it almost says to a lot of other businesses, hey, uh, we're trying to inspire you. If we can do it, you can do it too. Yeah, uh, and I think, you know, they the solar makes a lot of sense, particularly for a business, for a commercial enterprise. There are a lot of tax incentives, uh, and there's some federal grants that are uh, available, and I think the, the Salt Works took advantage of all of those, and, you know, when you do that, it really makes economic sense. Mm -hmm. So I think it was kind of a no-brainer for them, uh, and I think others will now see, like, oh, maybe this is something we should look into. Yeah, because they're already using the sun in their salt making process, right. the way they, they evaporate the water and extract the salt right. from it. Not to sound, I'm turning this into Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you, I mean, in a, in a very simple explanation, how does solar energy work? Yeah, the sun comes down on the panels, and then what happens? Yeah, well, the, the sun comes down and it hits those uh, photovoltaic cells, uh, and that converts the sunlight into DC direct current energy. That um, then gets piped uh, through wire to an inverter, which inverts it to um, AC current, alternating current, and then that uh, electricity, which is then usable either by the business or the residents, and then what is not used immediately um, in, the, in their business is net metered. It goes through their uh, utility meter onto the grid, and they're given credit for it. Um, and so they store credit uh, of in the kilowatt hours and the electricity they produce, and then they get to use that credit um, either later that night or later in the year whenever they need that electricity. That's the first, um, they won't have to buy electricity while they have credit stored up from their solar. I was talking to uh, one of the executives at the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce the other day, and mm -hmm. they're really, really excited about this. I mean, they've always seen as big backers of the coal and natural gas industry, but he said, we're, we're the all of the above policy. We yeah. want to still use coal, natural gas, but we want to start tapping into solar and mm -hmm. wind power and all the other alternative clean energies. Where do you see this going 10, 20 years from now in this state? Well, A, I think it makes really great economic sense, uh, you know, from the, from the development office and from the chamber, you know, all the big companies that we want to attract to West Virginia require renewable energy in their energy portfolios. So being able to offer solar and wind as a, a source of their energy is one way of attracting those businesses to this state. So I think that's big there. I also think that, you know, when you look at all the industrial brownfields and reclaimed mine sites that we have in the, in the state, that uh, a lot of those are, are, are perfect areas for doing large-scale solar development. And I think when we look at repurposing some of the land that was an old strip mine, can now be developed into a, a, an energy-producing solar array that will produce energy for the next 25 years. I mean, I think that's a huge win for the state. What do you think it's going to do to jobs? Well, um, here's what I can tell you. I know that you know, there's only a handful of, of solar installers and developers in the state, and I can promise you every single one of us is hiring this year. We've already doubled our staff this year in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're adding staff. So this is a job growth industry in West Virginia. I know all of us involved in it are adding jobs this year. So, um, you know, and if you look nationwide, then the amount of jobs that are being added, a, um, you know, every year in the renewable energy sector, I, I think it's upwards of 70 to 100,000 jobs a year nationwide. We'd love to get some of those here in West Virginia for sure. Well, these are exciting times. Real quick, give your website so folks can get more information. Sure, revolt-energy.com. All right, revolt-energy.com. You guys are based in Nitro. We want to thank Zach Drennan, one of the yep. co-owners of Revolt Energy, for joining us. Uh, we'll have you back to discuss this as the future uh, develops on Thanks, this. Mark. This is an exciting time here in West Virginia. We want to thank you for watching.